So first question I have for you is kind of a broad one, but what is the current state of Rails? Where is it now and where do you see it going? Well, Rails over the past year has just been in a lot of development with the new version, you know, Rails 3. Right now we have a Rails 3 beta. Um, and the reason why there's been a beta, it's, we've been in beta for a few months now because there's been so many changes in refactoring with the internals that it's giving sort of the plugin authors and the gem authors, basically the people that write libraries that add on top of Rails, mm. an opportunity to say, hey, you know, the way you did this, the way I've got to modify Rails, it's a little hacky, mm -hmm. you know, is there a better way that we could, you know, change it? And so they're sort of open to change, but right now, we're about to see a release candidate, hopefully, over the next few weeks. Um, so it would be a Rails 3 release candidate 1 mm -hmm. and headed towards Rails 3. And uh, so that's pretty exciting. And then, you know, hopefully over the next month or two, see an official release of Rails 3 and have more people adopting that. But there's even people using that in production today. Mm -hmm. So um, there's really no reason to, to not jump in if you like staying on the cutting edge sure. of uh, web framework technology. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this, but is the old Rails isn't ready for the enterprise argument, is that viable at all? No, not at all, not at all. There's lots of big companies right now taking advantage of what Rails gives you, you know, giving you the speed to develop application quickly, applications quickly, mm. but yet all of the tools to you know, uh, effectively use design patterns and some of the most cutting edge uh, testing tools which you'd already see and you know, you would hope, you know, you need to see in some of the enterprise applications. Um, one of the clients that I'm working with is a, is a Fortune 50 company. So, you know, we're seeing it right now, I'm seeing it right now, uh, very pervasive in the enterprise. So uh, the uh, whole idea that it's not ready, uh, I think that's a couple years ago. Yeah. Right, and do you think that that's going to get dispelled eventually? People will stop, like me, asking you that question? Uh, well, no, I think it's true of any new technology. Sure. You know, I think people will constantly be asking that until it, becomes pervasive, you know, like no one's going to ask that about Java anymore because mm. of, yeah. you know. Right. And so that's always going to be the question for any new technology because right. people are afraid of picking up, you know, what's the new and greatest thing. Sure. And, uh, you know, and maybe, maybe that's kind of good as well because, I mean, that, that's, if people are still asking that. That says to me that my, maybe my technology of choice is still growing and it's mm. growing so fast and staying on the cutting edge that people still wonder, right. maybe it still does have that edge even after a few years. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> I like it though. Yeah. Um, so now the Rails community is, is really vibrant and really oh, yeah. active. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? What is it about <laughs> that community that has allowed it to take, and take hold the way that it has? A couple answers for that. Um, first of all, Ruby. Ruby as a programming language, you can point to Ruby and say, you know, uh, it's a, a beautiful programming language mm. which it was designed to create and uh, programmer happiness. What kind of you know language you know that that was actually a purpose? One of the reasons is to promote programmer happiness, and I think you see that in the language mm -hmm. that it allows you to be expressive, and that's another one going into another reason because it allows you to be, to do advanced things like metaprogramming and take advantage of really advanced design patterns um, that uh, you know that make it so pervasive and then allow people to create things like domain specific languages that can you know, take an application and create a language you know, specifically for that technology. And we're seeing lots of stuff like that out of the Ruby community. Um, and we also have you know, a lot of people that bring out open source. I think GitHub uh, you know, has helped that even further. Mm. If you look at GitHub, there are so many Ruby projects and it's really easy in the Ruby community to find somebody who's created, say, a driver for that new web service you want to use. Mm -hmm. um, you see people releasing tons of open source technology, and that's one of the reasons why people, you know, come to the Ruby community because they see what you know, uh, how often people are innovating using, you know, creating new libraries, creating new gems and new libraries. Um, you can find it all because someone's probably created it, put it on GitHub, and you can use it in your project. You know, use that open source to, uh, you know, save your client money mm -hmm. and get your project ahead. So, so the last question I have for you, it's kind of an odd one too. Sure. Um, now your company, you do both development and multimedia production, right? Mm -hmm. So which one came first? Oh, definitely development. Okay. You know, I come from a development, you know, coder background. I have a mm -hmm. computer engineering degree, but I also have a theater minor. Okay, okay. I see where I so see where I'm, it came from. I, yeah. I'm into yeah media, producing media, mm -hmm. you know, going to conferences, capturing stuff, um, creating screencasts for my clients, mm -hmm. even you know, showing people how to use products. And something, I've been getting a lot more into business development. 
And what's been interesting is how the media stuff has sort of come together with the development stuff to the point now where when we're doing uh, active development on a client project, every Friday the, the developers that are working on that project deliver to the client a screencast. Hmm. Because when your clients are really busy, when you're working with entrepreneurs that have very little time and you, you finish what they wanted you to accomplish for the week and you send them a link to the beta site and you say, please take the time to test this out, mm. right? They're going to be much less likely to um, actually go and test it out than if you sent them, let's say, a five minute video. Sure. So with the, there's a couple great pieces of screencasting software that make it really simple for any of our developers to simply sit down, hit record, say, this is, this is the new you know, feature that you, how, this is how you use it. Um, you click here, you type in this, and you know, thanks for watching. And we can very quickly send that to the client, and they, it's, like, it's like feeding them crack. <coughs> like once they know that we're, they're getting screencasts and they can just watch a five minute <laughs> thing to see the feature, um, it's really valuable for them. And so that's a, that was an interesting, uh, sorry I got off track there. No, no, bit, that's But that's sort of one way technique. that um, sort of the media and the development are sort of coming together. Interesting. Well, yeah. thanks very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem.